Hello, hi, how's it going? Grab coffee, let's get Ray marching. So in the previous video in this series, we were making a whole bunch of spheres and the more spheres we got, the worse the performance got, predictably. And I was mentioning that we could add an acceleration structure on top of the scene to improve the render times. And that's what I'm gonna do in this video. But I had to think about good acceleration structures for ray marching and I realized that ray tracing already has good acceleration structures. They work pretty well. So what I've got here is a ray traced scene with a whole bunch of spheres. This is a little bit weird. I was running this on my MacBook and I was getting about seven milliseconds. Now I'm getting 150 on a more powerful GPU. I don't know what's happening there. That's fine. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to adjust this so that I'm using the acceleration structure from my ray tracer, my bounding volume hierarchy, but I'm using the ray marching algorithm under the hood. So I'll get the best of both worlds. It's worth mentioning um, this can be seen as sort of a follow-on from my web GPU ray tracing video on acceleration structures if you would like to see how this structure was um, generated. Yeah, as always, this is simply using the results and applying ray marching on top. So I'll just simplify this stuff, close this down. We don't need any of this stuff. And another thing we don't need is we don't need the render state. We can completely get rid of this. All of these bindings are fine. All I'm going to do in this main function is just pass in the pointer to the ray. Just because my, my code is based around ray pointers, not ray objects. But anyway, this is fine. So I have this function here. This is called ray color, but that's for the ray tracer. For the ray marcher, it's actually going to be something different. So I'm just going to, I'll go ahead and write the whole function. So this is my ray function color. My ray color function, I mean. <laughs> So here's the point at which we will be applying the ray marching algorithm. So just like in the previous videos, we grab a color. Okay, just setting up the parameters that we're used to. And then we will go ahead and march through the scene. Okay, so at this point, we want to get the, the closest distance to any primitive out in the world and this distance to scene is what this ray color function is actually going to become. That's the stuff where we interact with the bounding volume hierarchy. Um, but we'll get to that in a second. I just want to highlight that this is the point at which we jump out into the world and have a look at things. Okay, then I have a bunch of checks. I have the, you know, ray on the surface. We go, yep. We have the ray on the surface check, basically. And then we have the, you know, ray's gone too far check. Ray missed the whole scene check. Um, no worries. And then what we'll do is simply march that ray forward. So we shift its origin forwards. Yeah, by the distance to the scene. And then right at the end, 
we return the color. Okay, so that's the, the standard process that we're used to. And now the question is, how do we incorporate our bounding volume hierarchy? How do we take an approach which is hybrid? Part of it's ray trace, part of it's ray marched. Well, let's go to this ray color function and rename it as distance to scene. We're going to take two parameters. We're going to take a ray, which is basically a pointer in function address space to array. And the second function we're going to take is, uh, what is it? Ah, it's the, the index of the closest object. Okay. And we are going to return a float because it is literally returning the distance to the scene. So just going in and cutting out a bunch of this, we don't need the color, we don't need a render state, but we do need to know the um, distance to the scene so far. Okay, now this node stuff, if you've seen my other videos, is to do with the bounding volume hierarchy. So I'll just step through this super briefly so this uh, while true will just keep stepping through the hierarchy, keep stepping through the tree. First thing we do is we grab the sphere count for the current node, and we also grab the left child. Now, as you've seen before, if the sphere count is zero, then the left child will return or refer to the index of the left child node. The right child node is always that thing plus one. However, if the, if the sphere count is non-zero, then it's an external node, and it will be referring to the start position of the chunk of spheres, sphere objects held by that. Hopefully that makes sense. We'll, we'll see how this goes. So the first thing we're doing is we're just checking if we are on an external node. Now, if we're on an external node, we want to unpack it, get the two children that it refers to. Sorry, internal node. Oh, if we're on an internal node, we get the two children that it refers to. And then I want to get the distance of the ray to both of those. And I'm going to rename this as well. I'm going to call this distance to the axis aligned bounding box. Okay, we can take in the ray and the child, no problem. And I don't think this stuff has to change. So I'm just ordering them so that the closer child is checked first. Okay, no problem. And then this check should be saying, yeah, if the closest distance to the closest child is larger than the closest distances that we've registered so far, then disregard both of the children, pop off the next node from the stack, and then continue on with the next iteration. On the other hand, if the first child is within that distance, then we can pop it on, and then we can conditionally pop on the second child, provided that it is similarly closer than the closest distance that our ray has registered so far. Anyway, hopefully this makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, don't worry. Check my other video in my ray tracing series, my web GPU ray tracing series. Hopefully, hopefully I do a bit better job of explaining it there. <laughs> okay, so on the other hand, on the other hand, if we're not internal, we're external, and we need to be checking the actual spheres held by that node. So what I'll do is I'll just unpack the sphere index. And the way I can do that is... So what I'm doing is just fetching the actual index after dealing with the indirection which happens when spheres are reordered and thrown into different boxes. 
and then I want to get the distance to that sphere. So I'll say uh, make a variable called distance. And I'll pass in the ray pointer and also the sphere index. So hopefully you can see this is getting quite um, quite neat. Okay, so we trace that, and then we might get something which is closer than the first sphere that we've closest sphere that we've seen so far. So we'll go if the distance to this sphere is less than the closest distance, then of course we'll update everything. So we'll say closest distance is the distance. And then that closest sphere index gets updated as well. Okay. But then after tracing, we now grab the next node and nothing else here needs to change except right down the bottom. Well, let's just return the closest distance. Okay. I'm happy with that function. We can close that down. Now this hit sphere function is going to be changed. And I'll just grab the distance to sphere function that I've been using in previous videos. This is just the standard signed distance function for a sphere. So again, we take a pointer to array and a sphere index. And yeah just apply the sign distance function that I went through in previous videos. All right, so now we'll just modify this. We'll take the distance to the axis aligned bounding box. Of course, this is a pointer. That will return a distance. And not much else has to change. I'll just dereference the sphere, uh, the ray, I mean, to grab its info. Okay. I think that's fine. Let's find out. So we'll just go terminal. Okay. Okay, so we've got an error. What have we got? Ooh. Ah. <laughs> uh. I spelt const wrong. Okay, no worries. Okay, line 87, we should be returning something. No problem. Let's have a look at that. All ah, right. Okay. I guess we'll just return the color or maybe even maybe not even that let's just break what am I even what am I thinking okay there we go there we go okay so just note that performance isn't great could be improved but for what we're working with I'm happy with this. There are some weird artifacts around the edges that comes down to rounding errors in the distance. We can adjust that. But yeah, I mean, it's definitely better than it was. Used to be that we couldn't get 500 spheres at this render time. So, oh, and by the way, on my MacBook, for some reason, it renders about three times faster than this. I, I don't know why. Anyway, so that that's it for now. We've um, investigated in this video how acceleration structures can be applied to ray marching. We are sort of using a hybrid approach because we're using ray tracing to step through the nodes, through the boxes, but then when we get into the boxes we use ray marching to get the distances and this will be useful later on when I start when I start looking at more complicated surfaces like NURBS surfaces and things which are easy to approximate with ray marching 
and you can bound them with bounding boxes and they're easy to trace through. Anyway, so that'll be it for now. Have a great one and I'll see you again soon. Bye.